Hello, huge movie fanatic Nate, coming your way yet again, this time to review another one of these uh, kind of shot on video, um, just ultra low budget movies. Um, obviously me being a big fan of drive-in theaters in general, I'd like to go to them. Um, I like movies about them, including of course Drive-In Massacre. Back when I saw this, probably, I don't know, 2001 or 2002, I don't even know where I got this. I'm coming at you to review the movie by the name of no budget, shot on video, direct to video, movie by the name of Drive-In. I don't even know where I got this. I ran into this VHS and I got it. I'm just like, wow, Drive-In. I don't care how low budget it is. You know, and, and the, the title is kind of cool and dumb at the same time. It's kind of ultra, ultra non-creative uh, in a way, but also very much to the point. This is the VHS for Drive-In that was released in... 2001 by Spartan Home Entertainment. So I, I ran across this, and then guess what? Not long after, I ran across this, which is the DVD, and it looks like, yikes, I may have paid $10 for it, but you know what? I just rewatched this within the last week. I don't mind paying $10 for this. This is, uh, um, this is the DVD, obviously, also released by Spartan. <clears throat> and I love it. This is one of those DVDs that the special features include digitally mastered, Dolby Digital, full screen version, interactive menus, scene selection, and optional Spanish subtitles. Those are a lot of special features. I, I'm surprised they didn't include movie, picture, Movie sound, well they kind of do include movie sound, but I love when special features include, hey, the special feature is, there's a movie on the disc, and it plays when you press play, and it stops playing when you press stop. Those kind of special features I always find hilarious. But I'm coming at you to review this shot on video, ultra low budget, or ultra no budget gem, drive-in. Obviously, as I've already said, I probably discovered this movie, you know, 2001, 2002, or something like that. Bought the VHS and, you know, laughed at apparently liked it enough to get the DVD. I just revisited this, you know, just rewatched this within the last week because, you know, drive-in season where I live is coming to a, quickly coming to a close. And I just wanted to, re, you know, having revisited, um... Motorhome Massacre, I wanted to revisit another kind of shot on video, ultra low budget, ultra no budget movie. And I gotta tell you, I mean, this, you know, obviously when I saw this back in, you know, 2001 or 2002, I probably wasn't very impressed with it. But you know what the sad state of affairs is, is, is since 2001 or 2002, movies like that come out in the theater have gotten so bad, in my opinion, that this movie's almost better than movies that now, in my opinion, that now show in the theater, and if you're if you're sitting there going, what? How can that possibly be? It's like shot on video, straight to video crap. Well, yeah, it is. It's you know, back in the day, you know, when I probably, you know, just first saw this movie, or I probably thought the same thing, like shot on video garbage, just whatever. Now watching these shot on video movies, it's it's really kind of I don't know. It's it's a little bit of like a you know revisiting these movies so many years later, almost 20 years later and stuff, it's almost like a little bit of a charm factor to them. And um, I gotta tell you, with just, you know, mainstream movies in the theater, A movies, if you will, being so crappy, I'm finding myself more and more drawn to this kind of shit because this stuff is truly entertaining, maybe not in the way the creators of the movie intended, um, but if anything, if nothing else, it's they're entertaining in a way that is not intentional, which is it's just so dumb, it's it's a laugh riot, more funny than any kind of corporate comedy you'd find in the in the multiplex these days, the corporate, you know, theater slash dinner table slash reclining frickin' movie theater multiplex these days. Um, first off the bat, having rewatched this recently within the last week, I was really surprised by the amount of kind of different characters that are in this movie. Um, the whole movie revolves around the drive-in, which is great, and unlike Drive-In Massacre, like, the majority of this movie takes place at the drive-in, and they really, did a really cool thing where they actually got uh, to use trauma um, footage from trauma movies. I, you know, not, not being a trauma fan, I don't know exactly what 
is shown uh, on the screen, um, there was a thing where like Terra Firmer might have been, that might be the only movie that's shown in this. Uh, maybe someone can uh, confirm or if they've seen this movie, if, if in fact, you know, the, all the footage from this movie that's being shown on the screen is in fact just from one trauma movie, the Terra, Terra, Terra Firmer or whatever. But that title comes, you know, onto the screen at some point. But uh, I found this movie, rewatching it, just to be kind of a, just a WTF, no budget movie, shot on video delight. Um, basically, is a kind of a good idea, actually. Basically, it revolves around this, like, council, city council woman who's, like, got this, uh, which is very realistic because these people do have businesses and shit and they like to try to get votes that uh, will benefit their business and shit. This particular city council woman has, like, a a business for senior living or some kind of, you know, just people, I don't know how it's described in this movie, just people that, uh, I don't know how it's described, you know, people that don't want to see horror movies playing in their backyard, but basically this woman, I think, owns or has, is connected with this outfit, this, you know, to sell property or houses or whatever <clears throat> to people who whatever, just older people and stuff like that, and she has a problem with this drive-in theater being located right next to her property because the screen f faces, you know, some if not all of her property or whatever, and this theater constantly plays horror movies. And it's kind of a really cool, you know, it's, it's not the main plot point of the movie, but it's just one of the kind of many things going on in the movie. And this woman, this councilwoman's got this, you know, hulking guy who's probably like, I don't know what the hell he is, maybe early 20s in this movie, is just a, one of these really big kind of big and tall guys who's basically at the beginning of this movie in the, I don't know where they found pajamas this big, maybe they had to make them or something. But this guy is just basically a, you know, an adult idiot or whatever, and at the beginning of the movie he's in like pajamas, like, you know, onesie or whatever, and um, he gets out, he always gets loose, and because from the basement where they keep him, he can kind of look out the window and see the drive-in screen from where they keep him, and, you know, he's basically just been watching all this violence on, you know, the drive-in screen he can see from his basement window, who knows how many years or months or whatever, so this stuff has uh, really gotten to his brain or whatever, these violent movies. So, at one point, you know, this, um, he escapes at the beginning of the movie and causes some, you know, harmless havoc at the drive-in, and then he's, like, brought back, and the mom's like, oh, locks him in the basement or whatever, and she's got this, like, gay, you know, housekeeper slash babysitter for the guy, or for the big, huge man-baby, and the, the guy ends up, you know, the man-baby ends up getting out, and of course, you know, they don't hide the fact that it's not a, like a whodunit mystery or anything like that. They don't hide the fact, but basically this big, huge man-baby is the killer of this movie. But one thing I really like about it is, as I said, I mean, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of characters. Um, so, you know, you don't get bored with this movie, or at least I didn't get bored with the movie, you know, it features uh, kind of a, a thing with, you know, this couple or this, this girl reluctantly going on this blind date with this guy and, you know, and her not really digging it and her ex-boyfriend going is parked right next to him, you know, a couple cars next to him away and kind of this whatever and you know it's it's really not all that big a deal but there's just a lot going on this movie's probably only like 80 minutes long or something but compared to a lot of these shot on video just you know ultra no budget movies this has got a little bit of something going for it i really must admit and yeah i'll admit a lot of it is probably just the fact that it takes place the majority of it just takes place at an actual drive-in which is really cool because multiple times and you know you get to see the concession stand and then you go see people out parked in their cars and then you see a concession stand so it's really a great way to kind of I guess in the off season or if you're unfortunate enough not to have a drive-in movie theater near you it's kind of just watching this movie is kind of a good way to get a little bit of the, the drive-in movie theater experience just kind of by watching the movie and I think this movie does a much better job at kind of a drive-in movie um, massacre experience than the movie drive-in massacre I mean this is as, as an overall kind of being conceived and executed this is a much superior film to Drive and Massacre. Um, and they just take advantage of so many of the kind of the things around the drive-in, like the swings or the playground and all this kind of stuff. Now, 
I, you know, I'm saying a lot of positives. The down, you know, the non-positives about this movie, of course, you know, the kill scenes are really lame and kind of just whatever, and, and kind of one of the more uninteresting parts of the movie is, is the kills themselves. I would regard the, the best stuff just being, um, you know, just the drive-in atmosphere and stuff like that. And actually, to be honest, the script, you know, the dialogue isn't horrible, and a lot of the people they have in this movie, kind of the young kids and stuff, to act, really do a decent job and like when you know bodies start being found or whatever the screaming and, and stuff and is, is done really kind of well and better than you would normally find in a movie of this budget or, or lacking thereof or whatever um, so if you know maybe this movie is on YouTube maybe not but I would if you can get this movie for three dollars or less or something like that um, I would and you like kind of just WTF um, shot on video, no budget schlock, um, I would kind of regard or highly regard this movie as being something that really fits along those lines. I'm going to give this movie two stars out of four stars. And yeah, I praised it a lot and maybe my star rating doesn't really reflect that, but let's face it, it's a shot on video kind of no budget movie. But that's a kind of a high rating for a shot on video movie for me, you know. That's, um, you know, to be honest, the more I think about it, it kind of teeters towards, you know, two and one quarter star. Actually, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to give this movie two and one quarter stars out of four stars because it's much, I think that's what I, I think I gave Dry, or Motorhome Massacre two stars. This is a much better accomplishment. It almost, almost teetering on two and a half stars, actually, but I don't want to, you know, uh, go crazy and uh, end up giving it four stars, which it, you know I wouldn't say it really deserves. But what's really cool is you know for the lack of gore in the actual movie itself, they show so much of presumably terror firm or whatever this trauma movie fair is on the actual movie theater screen via kind of um, post production, you know, just kind of putting the image on the screen effects that you actually get to see some kind of good gore in the actual trauma movie on the screen, which is kind of ironic. There's no good gore in the movie itself, but in the movie playing in the movie, there's some better gore in the trauma movie, so that's kind of ironic, but uh, it's, it's kind of cool how they, they show, they cut to the, I should have counted, you know, it'd be a good drinking game if people are into that crap, how many times they show the actual drive-in screen, uh, they show it a lot, and what's really cool is, you know, it's kind of convincing sometimes more than others, like how it actually is, like at the, towards the beginning of the movie, there's a shot of it where there's a, like a leaf in front of the screen, and it's actually like, you know, I'm assuming every shot of the drive-in screen is just in post-production. They put, you know, the trauma movie on the screen and never having it actually projected on it. But uh, if that's the case, the one shot where it's like a leaf in front of it, where it's actually not showing through the leaf or whatever, looks really good. So if you can find this movie for free or for $3 or less or something like that, and you like this stuff, I would actually re recommend drive-in. Now... Like I say, a lot of lot of stuff going on, quite a big cast for this kind of movie, and relatively for what this movie is, I'd say pretty much all across the board, relatively good acting for what this is. So that's my review of Drive-In. Thank you very much for watching this review, and as always, we'll catch you next time.